In this video, we are going to be looking at information schema. This will be the tables of information schema. We'll be going over a few of these as we continue our SQL Basics series. Now, the following demo that I use, I am going to be demonstrating this with Microsoft SQL Server. However, it should be of note that many relational databases support these. However, some do not, so keep that in mind. You may not find these objects in the ones, uh, the database system that you're using, so you'll want to make sure that they're available. If they're not, there usually are alternatives to getting this type of information. So in this video, we are going to be looking at information schema tables, and as we see, if I do this, run this query in this database Debbie, we see that it tells us the table catalog, that would be the, date, uh, the database name, it tells us the table schema, it tells us the table name, and it tells us the table type. So this is the information we'll get. We'll look at a demo using this in a second. I'm not a big fan of any uh, type of uh, dynamic situation, but we'll look at one in which it sometimes is more appropriate to use than the video that I had last week on SQL injection. Now you can use three-part naming with information schema dot table. So I'm going to demonstrate this. We see that we're selecting from Debbie because that is the current context. But let's suppose I switch over to another database. In this case, it's going to be the dummy database. And I do and I run this. We'll see now the table catalog is dummy uh, DBO. And we see this TBG, uh, what is it, TB gold, I mean, and that's a base table. So it actually does apply as well. Um, but since the context here is Debbie and we're going to be using this, we'll be uh, using uh, this database. So this is very useful when you have a lot of servers during in those environments like I've been in before where you have 300 servers, it can actually be very useful to use uh, information schema uh, dot tables. Of course, you can also use PowerShell to just iterate over everything. That's another alternative. So in the video last week, we looked at a dynamic SQL example where I believe the user passed in a table. Of course, they could pass in anything, right? Or maybe it was a where clause. Can't remember now what I was doing. Um, but it was either a table or a where clause. And this is one of the challenges with dynamic SQL or anything that's dynamic. Yes, you might need to iterate over all of the tables, or you might need to iterate over all of the objects in a database, uh, like maybe the views or the stored procedures. And so it can be very useful to get a list of all the tables and then iterate over it. And again, some people choose to use uh, T SQL. I prefer PowerShell. So. But in this example, we're going to go ahead and do that. And let's suppose that there is a situation, a valid situation, in which a user is going to pass in a table name, and we're going to select from that table. Um, this is not the way I would go about doing it, but as we'll see, this is a lot better than what we did in the previous week in which we had that SQL injection example. So rather than take what the user gives us, we're not going to do that at all. We're going to actually first check with information schema tables if that table actually exists. We see we have this parameter user input table. So we're actually using information schema dot tables to first of all validate that the input is good. Then we have this other variable here, validated table, that we're going to actually use to store if the table is valid. Right? We're not using what they've given us. We're going to use something completely different, right? And we'll see we take the, the schema name here as well as the table name. That's because the table name may be on a different schema than DBO. We don't want to assume it's going to be on the default schema. And so in this case, I'll just execute this at first, and we'll have the uh, output. You can see what happens when we wrap it with wrap it in quote names that that puts the uh, brackets around it. And so we have the correct table. So now what we're going to do is we're going to execute this dynamic SQL. And we see that this dynamic SQL has this validated table. Again, we're not using their input. We're using what's been validated by information schema. And again, I wouldn't do this dynamically in general because it's not the best way to do this. However, you can see from this week to last week, if we just allow anything that the user gives us, there's no validation going on. Whereas in this case, we're using validation. We also see that we're taking some of the principles we learned last week, which is we're not giving them the ability to pass in anything. No reason to ever give somebody Navarcar Max. There might be appropriate use cases of that, but I'm not going to give my user that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, I can think of like some, uh, what is it, staging tables. You might use that for uh, some examples, but definitely not to give a user any ability. And so this is a lot better, a significant improvement than what we saw last week. So information schema dot tables is one way in which you can get all the tables in the database. You can get some information as we see on it. Uh, next week, we'll be looking at one of the other ones that I use quite often.